Hey everybody, it's Strict9 with Strict9 GP, and welcome to another episode of my Out of the Park 21 playthrough with the Cubs. We're at the opening day of spring training. Uh, I've gone ahead, simmed through all the uh, free agent period, the the rest of the free agent period. Um, I don't think there's anything too much that you guys missed since the last episode. Um, <laughs> It was kind of an uneventful offseason. I feel like I'm still in a holding pattern with this team, and it's going to be a lot's going to be decided this year. Even though our owner goals, it, it, one of them anyway, is to reach the playoffs, I don't see that happening. And I, and I don't know why he wants to upgrade at left field. Uh, you know, some of these owner goals, I know that um, I've seen some chatter on the uh, out of the park forums about, you know, how how accurate, you know, how attainable and all that kind of thing about the owner goals, you know, they're really worth it. I still like having that challenge of them because hey, occasionally when you make it, you know, it, I think it buys you some extra time if you're in a rebuild mode or if you're struggling. Uh, but some of these, man, I, I can, I can deal with improving your team bullpen ERA, uh, but I don't understand the upgraded left field. And I really, I'm just not sure I want to sign Anthony Rizzo to an extension, but we'll we'll just have to see. Here's let me go over the moves that we did make. Um, some we may have been starting in that last episode, but uh, a few things happened since then. We'll look at pitching first off, and I'll go by the pitching ratings. So I started getting antsy as the off season went along, and I was like, man, I need another um, I need another arm another quality arm. And so Garrett Richards, I think I mentioned him last episode. He is fragile. He has missed a lot of time. You have to go back in his career. You have to go back to 2015 when he was healthy uh, for the majority of the season. You know, so I realize that he's still rated highly, though. He's got three and a half stars, which would put him, you know, as one of the best starters in the rotation. And I was able to get him for just one year, $5 million. Um, I'm going to risk it because I didn't have anything better. And the rest of the rotation will probably probably be Darvish leading off uh, in that top spot. And then Rodriguez Hendricks, who is coming off a major injury last year. I don't know how that's going to impact him, but you're talking about seven to eight months that he missed. And up until that time, he was pitching really well, may have been my best uh, most consistent starter anyway. <clears throat> so I'm hoping that he has a decent season. And then in that fifth spot, we're probably going to have a couple guys competing for it. Even though Patterson is rated as a two stars from my scout, he's two and a half from OSA. And that control is, you know, around average, just a tick above average. But the rest of his numbers are good. I do like his change up. Um, he's got pretty decent stamina, uh, had a, an okay year um, in AAA last year. I think Alzale, <clears throat> a little bit more questions, even though he's got stronger pitches in that curveball and fastball, better stamina. I don't know if with that movement and control being a little bit less, I really don't know how he's going to do, but those two guys are going to compete for the uh, sixth spot or fifth spot in the rotation. So in addition to Garrett Richards, I also picked up Juan Ibarra. I think I was mentioning him last time. <clears throat> I really feel like this guy got him for a decent price. He's uh, 27 years old. I think when um, Kimbrell's gone, I think this guy's going to compete for that closer spot. He's got a <clears throat> excuse me. He's got a great fastball, um, good stuff overall. So he's going to have and good movement. <clears throat> so he's going to have um, probably a lot of high strikeouts, hopefully won't give up a lot of home runs. Right now I've got him listed as the setup guy and the stopper as a secondary role. We'll see how he, he does the rest of the season. Um, <clears throat> who else do we have new? Justin Wilson. I picked him up kind of, uh, I like his lefty ratings, so he's going to be kind of a specialist and a setup guy, I believe. And... Joe Kelly, I finally uh, picked him up. He's coming off a great year <clears throat> with the Dodgers. I actually traded for him this um, 
trade was is somebody I, I really was kind of under my radar, if you want to say. David Bodie, um, a prospect that the Cubs, I guess, were just really high on, and they signed him to a long-term contract uh, through 2026 20, with a team option. And you can see, once you get to this 23, 24, 25 season, it starts to add up for a guy who's probably not going to start. Uh, he's going to be, at the best, a bench player. I don't even know if he'll be able to to really hold down a full-time bench role if you, if you look at how he did last year. So his ratings have slipped quite a bit in um, out of the park. So I just threw him out there to see what I could get. And uh, I still think that Joe Kelly has some good ratings. Uh, he's going to be, I guess, in middle relief for me. He's got a team option for next year, which is pretty high, but I'll probably, uh, it depends on how he does, I'll probably let that go. I don't, I don't foresee keeping him, but that would get me out of that Bodie contract, so that was why I did that. <clears throat> and then on the lineup side, we're we're in some, some pain uh, here, or going to be in some pain. I did pick up one player who I was hoping to pick up, and I talked uh, about that, I guess, in the uh, last episode. Where is he? Brock Holt, there he is. Uh, this guy's an all-around uh, utility-type player. He can play right field. He can start right field. And honestly, I feel like uh, he's probably going to get some starting time in place of Hay- Hayward there. Um, right now, I've got him set to start every fifth game in spring training, but I have a feeling that that's going to be eh, more <laughs> as the season goes on. Hayward... Um, I had a viewer who gave me some good ideas about Hayward is, is maybe try packaging Hayward with the prospect. I just worked on it till I just grew tired of working on it. I could not get anybody to buy uh, this guy's contract. No, no AI, the AI teams would not bite. And so I'm stuck with him. Um, probably stuck with him for the remainder of his contract. And that's kind of a, a shame so I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping I don't have to have this situation where Holt starts. I hope Hayward has a, a great year. I hope he's good enough to bounce back and have, say, a year like he did, uh, even 2019, honestly. 21 home runs, 250 average. I mean, I would be happy with that. Um, I don't think we're going to see, like, what he was doing when he first came into the league in Atlanta, but... Just give me something, you know, and uh, if he's productive, a two, two and a half wins above replacement player, I, I can, I don't like having to live with it, but I can live with it. Uh, let's see. The rest of this lineup, though, it's going to be carried over from last year. And last year, we only won 71 games, so uh, we're not strong, I can tell you that. I think, I don't know how we're going to play. But I think this is going to be the year of the sell-off. Um, and it's going to be pretty painful, but I think it has to be done. If I'm looking at the big the big guys on this team, salary-wise, Bryant, Rizzo, Baez. Uh, the youngest is, is Baez. But, you know, and a lot of this, this is... This is the thing. I mean, you cannot, even though you're kind of um, basing all this on how these guys played in the MLB, I mean, we're already a season ahead of where they were when we when I first got out of the Part 21, for instance. But when this game starts generating those ra- ratings and you start you know, seeing the development of some of these guys, I mean, it's a whole new ball game. You might as well be... You know, you might as well be playing a fictional league at that time, at that point because you, you know, you just never know how these guys are going to develop. And I'm just, I'm really conservative, and so I'm going with my gut on a lot of this. But I take a look at uh, Baez's ratings, for instance, and <clears throat> first of all, his personality is not that high, but I and discipline in K's, that's not going to get any better. It's probably going to get worse. And he struck out over 200 times last year in this sim. And that was, you know, 2019 are his uh, actual numbers. 2020 is what he did for me last season. I think this is what I'm going to get from him going forward. Uh, Even though he had a high wins above replacement, a lot of that had to do with his 
defense. He, he won his first gold glove at short. Uh, 32 home runs, 95 RBIs. Hey, that's great. 85 runs, that's even good. Uh, OPS 780, you know, that's middle of the road for, for a guy you're paying this much money for. But I can foresee his ratings starting to take a dive already. And uh, that contact especially, I mean, he's he's good against lefties, but uh, he's going to see predominantly righty pitching. So <clears throat> with that in mind, just take a look at what this guy's asking for. He's wanting nine years, 37 and a half million at the height of it and an average of 33 and a half. There's no way that's going to happen. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go even four years at that money with him, with the ratings the way they are for him. So he's, he's going to be trade, uh, traded, I think, pretty early in the season. And that's, it's going to get me in trouble with the owner, but it's going to have to happen. Now, Chris Bryant, another guy, I talked about him last, uh, either last episode or a couple episodes ago. Again, this is, this is just the way out-of-the-part baseball, I think, is going to handle his career. I think you're going to see <clears throat> more with Bryant, more of what you saw last year with him, um, which was a two twenty five average, three wins above replacement, 180 strikeouts in 667 plate appearances. So, um, OPS of 746, which was, if I'm not mistaken, let me take a look at just, that was his lowest total uh, of his baseball, you know, his major league career. So, again, with that kind of, knowing that, he's wanting an average of $32 million over nine seasons. I wouldn't even go four or five years with him. I don't think, I don't think you're going to get the value of it. Rizzo, Rizzo though intrigues me a little bit. If I'm gonna have to keep any, he's captain. He's uh, he's green all across the board, so he's gonna give you walks um, and not as many strikeouts as the other two. He's gonna play good defense at first, a position that you don't really need defense that much. Um, I could foresee trying to get this guy signed and look at look at what he's wanting. I would go four more years at $17 million with him. Um, let's just see if he'll do it just to get this one out of the way and I'll give him a player option. So one, two, three, four, five and a player option. Let's see if he'll do a team option with a $1 million buyout. All right, so that's the buy out there. Whew. I mean, I know I'm probably not going to get the full value of this contract, but I wouldn't mind having him for another couple, two, three seasons. And I feel like it's probably what I'm going to have to do to keep him. And then we'll see what Bryant and Baez, uh, you know, what they can do. Or what what kind of trades I can get for them? I know that um, I know that's probably risky. It's risky either way, honestly. With with this uh, Cubs team, I think that's where you're at. Don't want to go that long with him, but I would like to keep him. I think I need his uh, personality on this team, his fan favorite, you know for sure. That would satisfy the manager's. Uh, go where is it yeah to sign Anthony Rizzo to an extension so uh, let's let's just see what we get so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and just send through um, the I'm gonna just send through the uh, spring training here this episode and then we'll get ready for um, for the regular season I'm, I'm gonna be looking at a lot of different guys here but I'm, I'm really looking at Holt a lot see uh, if he's going to be the kind of utility player I'm hoping that he's going to be. Um, Caratini, I think this is going to be his second full season as a starter. So I'm hoping, uh, well, take that back. This is going to be his first full season starting at catcher. He played a lot at first base last year when Rizzo was injured. Horner, still not sold on this guy. So 
Holt, if uh, Holt looks pretty good, he may be taking over in, uh, at second. But uh, let's go ahead and get it going. And injuries, uh, I'm doing pretty good right now, but you know how this goes. I'm pretty sure we're going to see some injuries as we go along. So we got a personal message here. This could be Rizzo already. That's yep. It's he signed. That's that's early to sign him, but yeah, man, that's scary. Uh, I hope I get that uh, value out of him. And let's keep going here to see. We're we're starting out really good in spring. Um, so, but already we got you Darvish. who's going to be hurt. No way am I going to let him pitch, even if it's a minimal injury. I'm going to put him on the 15-day uh, day DL, and that's going to give me uh, another spot, which this team, too, they are not set up with a great farm system either. Um, you know, you got a couple, you know, a few as you get down lower in the um, minors, you know, like Brandon Davis is probably my best prospect and he's I think he's eh, I think maybe a couple years from from getting a look uh, he's going to be at double A this year but man even even really down all the way into low uh, A in the rookie leagues there's not a whole lot going on with this uh, farm system not many international um, amateurs out there or not many in the international complex either so um, I may be wind, wind up having to look at somebody like Corey Abbott, who um, had a decent, you know, he looked decent at um, Iowa last year. So, let's see how this works. We've got a trade proposal from Arizona, uh, a pitcher for third baseman I, I really I'm stuck with the pitching where I'm at right now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna trade away anything for uh, pitching at the moment I really need I think more offense more than anything so Chris Sale wow talk about big contracts this um, he's gonna be gone for three months now in this season he's coming off a really rough uh, patch he missed all of 2020 and that's crazy and you see what they're playing, paying him. Uh, we got Freddie Freeman re-signs with the Braves now. Just by contrast here, he's the same age as um, Rizzo, rated a little bit better offensively and defensively. He, he is probably uh, quite a bit better offensively, and he signs for thirty-four and a half million uh, for, for really the same length because. With Rizzo on our contract, the last year is going to be a player team option. So, really double. He got double the money that Rizzo got. And Carlos Carrasco already out. That's a big blow for Cleveland. He's going to be gone for the season. And now let's look at the player update, see what we got here. Drew Rasmussen. I'm hoping this guy starts uh, developing. I don't think he's going to make it <clears throat> as a starter, but... He has great stuff, fastball slider. Four stars right now as a reliever. Uh, this guy, he could be a potential closer uh, if he gets the control and movement back up. Kimbrell, another guy who's um, trade uh, trade bait, I think, for this team um, if, we, if we struggle early. Ian Happ, looking good. Uh, great eye and discipline. He strikes out a lot, but he's going to get it fair number of walks uh, Ian Miller a lot of development here in a positive way um, now we go Brennan Davis even developed a little bit so he's not going to be a sensational type player but I think eventually his ratings will probably all settle in the green you know so that he's going to be above average in most all of his ratings individual ratings um, so it, it'll be interesting to see what kind of player he turns out to be. But uh, spring coverage, let's see how we're doing. So 7-4, and four, just a half game behind Pittsburgh. Not too bad. I'm going to play another week out, and we'll take a look at the, uh, maybe our stats. Uh, we're starting to lose a little bit here, it looks like. So we're going to be 9-7. and seven. 
<clears throat> and we got an injury to deal with, and it's Seth Elledge. And it looks like he's right back. He's another one that I traded. Um, no, sorry, I did not trade for him. Um, I called him up from uh, really from high A last year, and he was looking so good in high A. I mean, he was dominating and had really good ratings. Long term, I think he might be a potential closer in the making. So we got a young starting pitcher, not much there. So let's take a look. Uh, see, spring coverage, we're still playing above 500. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I usually don't put a lot of weight into the performance in spring training, but I'd rather be winning than not. So let's take a look at this pitching staff. So pitching stats and for spring training. I'm really starting to pay attention to the, to the FIP numbers. Um, Kyle Hendricks, he's one of those guys, I think he really gives you that year in, year out. Um, let me see if I look at his pitching stats. Where is his FIP? Yeah, I probably need to put that somewhere here so I can look at it. Um, pretty good. I mean, in the, three, in the threes is, is usually a good sign, uh, and he's consistently in that that category. So he's looking pretty good this spring. I hope that's a, a sign that he's back healthy. Garrett Richards looking good as well, and R Rodriguez. Um, I'm going to have a probably a big question to answer with him. He may be, depending on the year that he has, if he doesn't regress at all, he may be somebody I want to keep if I can get him for around that $9, $10 million price again. So the bullpen, Elledge looking good, Kelly looking good, uh, Rasmussen. You know, if that bullpen and Justin Wilson that I picked up looking pretty good except for walks, that bullpen looks good. I mean, we, I really paid a, put a lot of focus on the bullpen in the off season, and so we were 71 wins last year. Our bullpen probably cost us 5 to 10, so that might be enough to get us around 500, everything else being the same. But on the lineup side now, batting stats, and we, we don't really have a lot of players. So I'm going to go with 13 players for the regular season. I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 14. So we're not looking at too many players here because we just don't have them and in, in the minors to call up. And if I'm looking at it, I'm thinking he's going to be matching. is probably going to be the odd man out. Um, he, I guess he was like a f minor league free agent pickup. Um, yeah, so we picked him up after he was dropped by the Cubs, and uh, I don't really foresee a future for him. But looking at the rest of the team, uh, Rizzo is struggling. Horner's looking pretty good. Uh, for in the spring, Bryant's looking awesome. Uh, so is Baez. Those two guys having a great um, spring. Almora, Hayward, if he had that kind of line for the rest of the year, even though his OPS is pretty pretty low, I'd still um, take something like that, 256 or above average. All right, so let's keep playing and see how the rest of the spring works out. There's not going to be a whole lot of movement to make. Like I say, um, and there, there it goes. So that was Darvish ready to come back. That was the gamble with Richard. So I sign him, I lose him in the same in the spring. Um, whew. So that was a total bust. It was you know a five million dollar gamble. Uh, what did I have? I had a pretty good amount of money still for free agent. I thought it was worth it. Turns out it wasn't. So, Granky's out for Houston. That's a big blow for them. Uh, Yelich going to start the season on the DL. But now I gotta I gotta think about what I'm gonna do because that puts me back where I was before I before I uh, signed Richardson. 
Now we've got this guy. If I put him to starter, you can see he's just two and a half starter with a, th a three um, potential. And really, he's okay being in the bullpen. So I feel like bullpen's where he needs to be. That's where he's going to. Um, I think that's where he's going to be the most uh, benefit to the team. Dwayne Underwood looks like he's he's injured, not having a very good spring. But the rest of this pitching staff looking really good, especially the bullpen. Alzale struggling. Uh, Darvish is going to be back in here. Uh, I'll let Abbott play it out in that first roll for now. And so it's going to be Darvish, Rodriguez, Hendricks for sure. <clears throat> And then it's going to be between these three, uh, Alzale, Patterson, Abbott. One of those is going to be odd man out, and I have no idea who it's going to be. Uh, let me let me take a look at... Let me take a look at the free agency real quick. So, not much out there, really. I mean, not much at all. <clears throat> Chatwood, who's a former Cub, who just was really a bust. Um, so, nothing out there. Chen, um, his numbers are just uh, terrible. He would probably have to go into the into the bullpen with the ratings that he has. So... Here's the question. Of those three or two that I have left, Baez, Bryant, who would you try to ship first? Um, let's try Bryant, see if we get any kind of, any kind of, uh, interest here I'm sure we'll get some uh, we're gonna get some high contract type guys like LeMayhew um, Grandal closure there rated four and a half uh, terrible control though Arenado, Trevor Story. Rojas, pretty good uh, in some ways. I mean, he's he's respectable as a shortstop. Rendon. Mm -hmm. Josiah Gray. He's a couple years away, if that. Uh, here is, and I have a hard time saying this, Loizaga. Uh, coming off a eh, fairly decent season. Uh, we got quite a few starts, though. I wonder if I can see his 21 split. No, I can't see his splits from last year, right? I didn't save those, or, or they're not available. Uh, the thing that gets me about him is that stamina. Um, and I would be, you know, I'd be trading for him as a relief pitcher, hoping that he develops into a starter. My scout thinks he should hold down a rotation spot, but he's probably going to be a, a while. It's going to be a, a while before that happens. Alec Bohm, uh, who in my Phillies playthrough that I'm playing, and another Phillies playthrough, he has developed into the starting first baseman. I was able to trade away Reese Hoskins and let him start. He's been pretty good. I mean, he's uh, he's got some upside for sure. All right, so I'm probably going to play through. Um, I'm going to play through the spring. And, 
and just see how we finish up with that rotation. Um, I think there are enough prospects in that mix that you know I could probably trade him away, but I want to I want to play around with it and get something uh, a little bit more valuable, and I don't want to just waste too much time in this episode uh, doing that for now. But let's go back. We're at March twelfth. Let's let's just keep going and finish out the uh, spring training here. Ah, Drew Rasmussen went out. That's one thing. I think he was injured a little bit last year as well. Not too bad. Uh, I was hoping that he was going to have a breakout year this year, so I hate to see that. But at least it's not six months. And uh, take a look at the news while we're at it. Austin Nola. And let's see, the spring coverage, we're at 12 and 11. So we're going to have a tough time, I think, finishing above 500 in the spring. And looks like we don't. We finished at 13 and 15. Um, let's see, Kimbrel. Uh, thankfully, he's only out for a couple days. Joey Gallo out, nothing big there. But... Um, so right away I can I can take matching down and gosh I just got two players to to, uh, to move down I think M McGill is probably going to be one he's uh he's really starting to lose it. he had a an adequate season in some respects but I don't know a 0 0.1 negative wins above replacement and what was his fit? 475. I, I don't, I think he's safe to take down or send down. But let's look and see how that rotation did. So, so I got Darvish is going to start, and he looked good, really, even though he was injured. Uh, Rodriguez looked pretty good. Hendricks, of those two, I'll probably put Hendricks second, even though um, he's not a dominant type pitcher, but I'll, but I'll do it for now. Corey Abbott didn't look too bad. But um, my scout thinks he's going to make a, fourth, a fifth starter. Alzale... Yeah, same deal there. And then Patterson. I think Patterson needs the same thing. I, I just think he, Patterson probably needs a little bit more um, time. And that is a poor, poor um, rotation. But let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I got one guy here I need to move, and I guess it's going to be Underwood. Um, he was bad for us last year, and I'll put Patterson in there. Uh, he's out of option years, but that's okay. I don't really feel like um, – I don't really think he's going to make it in that bullpen. He hasn't been all that great, and if somebody picks him up, that's fine. So that's going to be the rotation and uh, until we start making some trades. I'll probably have Patterson as the emergency starter. But I do like the way the bullpen looks. Um, I think that is a, is a very serviceable bullpen. Uh, hopefully, uh, Elledge will come back okay, and, or Rasmussen, sorry, and that won't be too big of a a hit to his ratings. Uh, I do think this guy's going to develop into a pretty uh, close to dominant relief pitcher. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and send to opening day 
take a look at the pre preseason predictions, and then I will uh, come back next episode. And, and Underwood's being claimed by a couple teams. I just think. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, he did look good at AAA. I just think he's he's the odd man out here. I still let me let me double check, but I still think he's the odd man out, especially with Rasmussen coming back in a few weeks. Um, I really think Patterson has more upside. Or sorry, uh, yeah, Patterson. So I'm gonna stick with it. Would Mills be though? Uh, let me take a look at this. He's out of option years. Do I want to send Mills down? Because honestly, Underwood's numbers um, look better than his. He just doesn't have the stamina. Decisions, decisions. Yeah, Mills has never really looked anything. He's a ground ball pitcher. We're a pretty decent team. Yeah, I'm going to stay with it. I think uh, I'm going to lose one of these. It probably It's probably about the same either way. Um so let's go on to opening day. And season expectation, yeah, he wants us to make the playoffs. I get that. So it's Baltimore who picked up um, Underwood. Top prospects, we have zero. Minor league system, we are still 20th. That's respectable. Marquez who is a starting pitcher who's currently at double A, but uh, he's going to have to pick it up development-wise. He's not really impressing me all that much. Then Brendan Davis, Alzale, who I'm going to let him start uh, in the majors. And then Amaya, another guy who, with, I guess, more time as a starter, he might develop. He's just 22 years old. He's got good defense um, across the board. You know, average right now in um, offense, but might eventually reach above average. Um, depends on how he does. You know, he he could force Caratini out, and he'll be some somebody else I can trade. But let's look at the predictions here. So we got the Yankees, Tampa, and a pretty weak American League East. Cleveland, Minnesota. I uh, don't know what's going on with the White Sox here in this prediction. I don't know why they would be so so low. And then you got Houston still winning. Angels looking good, just a game behind them. Trout expected to have another good year. Um, in my Phillies playthrough, on the other playthrough I'm going, he just won the um, MVP for the 2021 season. So he hasn't slowed down at all as a player in this uh, out-of-the-park baseball Guerrero, Robert, I mean, those guys are settling into being superstars. Same with Cal Tucker. Pitching-wise, Verlander. In this playthrough, uh, he's retired in my Phillies win, but he's still pitching strong here. And then National League, they have us picked 84 and 78, which would be <clears throat> just, it looks like a, a game back of Philadelphia for the wild card. So I didn't really expect that. And I think... Top hitters, we got probably nobody. Um, Bellinger is, again, supposed, supposedly going to have a good year. Alonzo, 52 home runs predicted for him. Freeman, a solid year. On the pitching side, they think Darvish is going to have a good year. Um, he is coming off a... I think, I think the year he's coming off is, is pretty good. 15 wins. 
uh, 34 starts. I mean, th the big thing with him is, is he's going to give you 30 plus starts, I think. Um, so I was happy with what I got from him. I hope I get the same this year. But looking at his FIP, um, yeah, it, it could you know it could be a little bit better. 438. I mean, you, you look at the years when he was really dominant though in the low threes, under three in uh, 2014. So that's um, I'd like to see him have those kind of years again, but it's probably not going to happen. So for now, if he gives gives me this kind of a year, that would be enough. Uh, but he's it. That's the only player showing up in the uh, top predictions here. But still, if we finish 84 and 78, I'll be really happy with that. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the episode here. I will probably work offline just doing some test runs between now and maybe, well, I probably will come back uh, I'll probably do a few trade offers out there on, on some of those big guys see if there's anything that I like but I'll probably just come back in the next episode we'll play through maybe a month or so of the season and see how we start uh, but as always I really appreciate the support hope you're enjoying it I'm hoping that this one this has turned out I think to be the challenge I thought it was going to be but I don't know if this is a team that I can turn around it's going to be tough uh, but hopefully you enjoy it, and I will see you next episode where we get this uh, 2021 season started. Thanks for watching.